Tri-State Bible College. Fulfill your ministry. Greetings to our IT staff and our faculty. Uh, this is Rex Howe, President, Tri-State Bible College, and I am going to give a brief tutorial of what I've done in my Populi class in order, I hope, to help others as they build their Populi class as well. So I'm going to share my screen with you and go into my spring 2022 class on Christology and pneumatology, and you should be able to see that now. And uh, what you'll see uh, here is just, uh, we're on the syllabus page, and this is, uh, as you follow my cursor, over on the left side of the screen is really our headquarters for the class, right? So we have the dashboard, the syllabus tab, lessons, files, assignments, discussions, conferences, tests, calendar, roster, gradebook, attendance, reporting, chat, and settings. And so this is where you navigate through your class. Uh, just to start at the top, this is what the dashboard looks like. There's not much here because the class hasn't started yet. I'm sure that as class starts, students and I will post things to the bulletin board in order to communicate uh, in the class community. You'll notice that I've already scheduled uh, these discussions um, at one through 10 throughout the semester. Uh, you can see those there. Also, um, the syllabus tab. Uh, this is what it looks like, uh, the basic course info here, meeting times here. A lot of that will already be set up for you uh, because the class um, will be, uh, at least a shell of the class will be set up for you through either, uh, either one of our registrars. So a lot of that information will already be there for you, but some of it will not you'll want to make sure that your description of the course matches what is in the catalog. Uh, you will want to make sure that you've uploaded any internet links that you think will be helpful to your students. If I may point out a few of them that should be important to our students, no matter what class they're taking, uh, this Turabian online resource link, um, that is going to be helpful. Um, I can click on that and see if that, uh, I think you should be able to see that. Here's where it takes us. It takes us to chicagomanualofstyle.org and um, the Turabian quick guide is here and so on and so forth. So that's an example of a link that should be um, helpful to any student in any class because we are writing our papers in Turabian format. Another one may be, um, uh, this site here, MyBib reference, Referencing Resource. Uh, this is a way that students can uh, use, uh, this is a source, a resource that students can use in order to put their references, uh, that is for their footnotes and their bibliography page. They can build that here in MyBib. Uh, they can also use Zotero, which is another referencing tool. Um, so I've included uh, these these links here as things that I think our students will uh, find helpful. You can also have required links, and this will coordinate into my syllabus. So this is a required link for my students that have to do some reading on this page as it comes up here. It's not going to load for us today. It's not going to, so we will not visit that site. But uh, they have some reading to do on that site. Uh, I've also added my required textbooks. If you want to add a textbook, you just click on the add feature. And what has popped up here is simply an entry for me to type in the ISBN number. I can search by title, but ISBN is uh, much more specific. And so if I type in, for example, the ISBN of this commentary on Ephesians that I happen to have on my desk here, and I hit search, it has pulled it up. Here's Harold Honer's Ephesians exegetical commentary. And all I have to do is 
make sure I got the right one selected. I can make it a required text. If I unclick that, it makes it an optional text, uh, but I want it to be required. So I will save it there. Uh, but now let's say, you know what? I really don't think I want to require that book. Um, so I'm going to remove that. I'm going to take it off my required books and hit OK. So, um, so that, that gives me the required books and the optional books. These add features are here for reading list. It's there for the links. It's also here for any files. If you have a PDF file that you are going to require as a uh, activity or as a, um, a reading assignment, I've got, for example, a spiritual gifts list. Um, I've got uh, DTS Bailey Four Foundations as a reading assignment. I've got uh, Leith's Creeds of the Churches that I've uh, created a PDF for. So these are all PDFs that will be required in the course. Now you'll notice that some of these are hidden. That is the student cannot see them. So let me show you that. You can actually go into student view by clicking these three dots here, which just gives you a menu. And I can view courses student. So when a student looks at my course, which is helpful, because I want to know what they see. All they see are the, the ones that I've allowed them to see. They don't see all the, the different files from all the different professors throughout the history of this course. They just see the ones that I want them to see there. Um, so you simply exit this student view by going to the bottom of the page and hitting exit. And then you're building the course. Here we are. So that's the syllabus, and most importantly is the syllabus. So here I've uploaded a PDF of my syllabus. Um, if I edit this, I can replace this file, or I can download a new file, or I can trash this file, but I'm going to cancel because I've already got it in here. And uh, students are able to scroll through my syllabus. Now, it's very important that whatever syllabus you put here, that it matches the reading, the files that I need, the reading requirements that I have, both required and optional. And you can add another category like recommended reading, which I did. If you look here, I've got um, course materials, required reading, required course files, required course link, optional reading, and then recommended reading, which isn't uh, here on the screen, uh, but just other books that I am going to either going to pull from the library or I think they should look into if they want to read further on the topic. So that's the syllabus page. You also want to make sure that your syllabus lines up with the assignments tab um, with any Zoom conferences that you're scheduling um, and uh, so on and so forth. So um, let me move on to the lessons tab. Now, uh, there's a welcome and each of us should have a welcome to our class uh, that greets the students, maybe even um, addresses some important things that you want them to know right off the bat. And then you have lessons one through 15 for each week of the semester. If this is a summer semester, it's only going to be lessons one through eight. Uh, but this is a 15 week semester that I'm working in. Uh, as you go into lesson one, you'll see that you can set up. Uh, I've started to design this one, but it's still early on yet. Um, I'm going to have an introduction to the learning environment in lesson one. I'm also going to have a reading of DTS Bailey Four Foundations of Evangelical Theology. I will have a glossary review of the relevant terms for pneumatology and Christology. And then we will finally get into an introduction to Christology, hopefully. Um, here on the files tab, you can see all the files that have been uploaded to the course TH202. Now, some of these are from other professors. For example, Dr. Bloomfield has taught this class. I think that uh, Professor Langer has taught this class, and now I'm teaching this class. So uh, we get to use, you can see Bobby Mercer has uploaded some files to this class for, for professors. So um, this is just a, a collection area for every file that has been used in this class. You certainly don't have to make all of these visible. As you look here, you can see that uh, this file, for instance, is visible to staff and faculty only. Uh, while whereas this one is visible to students and you can change that visibility um, simply by clicking and I can change it to visible to everyone and um, if I wanted to do that which I don't so I'm just going to move my little picture here and x that out okay assignments 
you have two two levels to the assignments you have uh, assignment groups so these are like the the umbrella or bucket categories for your assignments for example i have many discussions um, but this is the discussions bucket or discussions category i have two taxonomy assignments and you can see that over here so i've got 10 discussions two taxonomies eight reading reports because i have two books and then i have a number of articles i have two exams a midterm and a final I have one group project and I have two video uh, video responses or reflections. So these are my groups and I've weighted these group assignment groups differently. I put the emphasis on these two assignments because they are the they are the ones I want to be considered the most significant. And uh, as you move down, you'll see these weights are then factored into the percentage of the course grade. So the the thing I'm trying to do is to give every learning style a chance to do well in this class. So if if you're a reader, um, that's part of it. If you are a test taker, that's part of it. If you are a group worker, there is a group project. If you're a creative, I've got a video response. And if you like to write papers, your taxonomy is going to be a paper. So I've got, if you like to be social and discuss things out, there's a discussions. So I've tried to factor that in. Uh, but weighting it according also to what I think the most significant assignments are. Um, so I've set these weights here. Now, if I wanted to change um, the weights, I think I can, oh yeah, I can edit groups and assignments. So I just click that and I can change this. Um, any of these, I can add, um, I can add group assi assignment groups. Uh, I can change assignment groups. I put the weight in here. Um, I can delete assignment groups over here. I'm not going to do that right now, uh, but you see how I can I can do that. If I want to add an assignment group, let's say I wanted to add a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth assignment group, I can do that just by clicking add an assignment group. I put it in. I would have to recalculate the weights because it's looking for 100%. And right now I don't have any percentages left. Um, I can add other features like drop the lowest grade in this group. If I want to add, uh, let me let me move on here. So that's assignment groups. You also have assignments. So these are the individual particularized assignments uh, that that make up the assignment group weight. So you'll notice a number of reading assignments: one here, two here, three here, four here so on and so forth. You'll notice a number of discussion assignments, 12 I mentioned above. I have a taxonomy due here, and I have a taxonomy due here. I have a final exam here, I have a midterm here. And so uh, if I want to add an assignment, uh, I can add it here. I can add an assignment, I can duplicate an existing assignment, like with all my reading assignments, I duplicated it and then made modest changes because it was mostly already set up the way I wanted it. Um, I can even import an assignment from another course. Like if I taught another course and I thought I really want to do um, in each of my theology classes, I want to do a theology together assignment. So I could take that course into another course um, and just modify it the way that I need to for this particular course. So those are assignments. Again, I can delete the assignments over here. If I need to edit assignments, I just, again, click on that top. Uh, I did that fast, so I'll go back and do it again. I can click on edit groups and assignments. I click there. Um, let's say, you know, I really want this, to, this uh, video response to be in the exams portion. I could just change that up here. I'm not going to do that, but that's something I could do. Um, I can rename the assignment. I can talk about the point value of each assignment. Um, the due dates are uh, manageable here. Um, how long the assignment is available to complete. So if I want this discussion uh, completed by the second week of class. There it is. It's due at 11.59 at the end of the second week of class. Um, I can make my taxonomy due on April 29th. Now, 
I'm not a big believer in having all assignments due the last day of the semester. I think that's that's not healthy. Uh, the reason being is the student doesn't know how he or she is doing in the class when when grading is performed that way. I think there should be uh, the the access of the student to see how they're performing throughout the semester. So I've staggered uh, all of these assignments that we do at different times throughout the semester. Uh, it also uh, means that I don't have to grade everything all at once. I get to grade a little bit at a time throughout the semester. So I would I would counsel in that way. So I've uh, saved uh, canceled that. Uh, I would save it if I had changed anything, but I didn't. And so those are my assignments. Uh, just so you see, if I want to add an assignment, um, here's what it looks like. Uh, you name the assignment, you describe the assignment, you have a number of ways to grade it. Um, I can give a grade only. Um, I can uh, have a, uh, uh, a file down uh, put on here uh, if I click that. Uh, a peer review file that is uh, part of their grade is going to be uh, a peer review. So the their classmates are going to review the file that they submitted. Um, it can be a test, uh, fixed points. Um, it has all kinds of features here. There can be a time limit, keep high a score if they can retake it, so on and so forth. Um, discussion is the type of assignment. Um, uh, this shows all, all my discussions here that I've already built. It can be an essay, it can be a peer reviewed essay. So again, the grading, part of the grading is gonna be the review of their peers. So there's a number of kinds of assignments that you can build into Populi. Discussions, uh, you can see here that uh, my discussions are listed here, um, available, uh, future, uh, here, I, I'll be quite honest, I don't know why these are available and these are not, probably has something to do with my dating. Like if I go back into assignments and I look at this discussion, um, let me see if I can, look, let's just do a little bit of live editing and see what happens. Um, and so yeah, this one shows that it shouldn't be available until January 10th. So I'm not real, oh, that's, that's reading. Uh, here it is. Yeah, shouldn't be available until January 10th. So I'm not exactly sure why that is visible. Um, that would be a question. So let's just, let's just take that for instance. I don't know why that's happening. So here's what I can do. Uh, I can go into uh, help right here in the top right. I can open a support request in Populi. And what I do is um, assignment availability question. And now as I do this, there's already suggested articles. Um, some people have already asked questions like this. So I would need to search the database or the knowledge base up here for something that's already answered my question. Um, now, if I don't see something that really closely pertains to my question, maybe um, maybe I ask the question anyway. So I don't really see anything there that exactly answers my question. So I'm gonna say, um, I set my assignment availability for January 10th, 2022. However, my assignments are showing their availability as current. Do you have any advice? Thank you. And they're really great to respond fast. Um, so I'll submit that and they'll get back to me. So I really recommend, and there it is, it pops up and they'll respond here. And I'll actually get an email when, when the response comes in. So it's really, really efficient. Um, so we'll leave that there. I don't know why that's available already. Um, should, everything should be here in future. 
Uh, nothing should be available yet, but we'll see what happens. Uh, conferences. So I've set up all these conferences through our Zoom integration. To set up a conference, you hit add conference. Uh, make sure that you select your name. And um, we're in a transition here between semesters. So I know all of you may not yet have your, um, your Zoom integration um, uh, uh, host license. Um, some of you have pending emails that you need to accept your uh, pending Zoom license agreement. Um, so check your email for that. Uh, but I select myself, I name the, um, the meeting, and I always put lesson, and then whatever the number is, and then I always copy and paste the password into the title, that way a student does not have to go looking for it, and then I can say intro to Christology, and uh, the class is going to be on, we're going to say the 11th. My class is from 4.30 start time. It's going to run till, <coughs> excuse me, 7 o'clock. So I'm going to say 150 minutes. I want the students to get emailed when this starts. <coughs> excuse me. And so uh, they will get an email when the conference, when I start the conference. And then I just hit uh, save. So now uh, here it is. It popped up. It's scheduled. When I start the conference, it will move to in progress. And when I end the conference, it'll go down to concluded and there will be a recording where the students can go back and rewatch the, the video. So I'm going to delete that one. Now, now you'll notice that I have not made a conference for every single class. And um, let me speak to that for just a minute. My class is TH202 Resident Modular. Resident Modular means that um, a student has to be on campus at least one time in person uh, for that class with, with, uh, with our accrediting association. So um, I have, on certain weeks, required the students to be in class. Week one and two, they got to be there. Uh, seven and eight, you'll see here, and then 14 and 15, they have to be in class, and that's because of certain assignments. Now, um, I want faculty to know that you do have this authority to use the Zoom integration as, as you would want to, um, with an exception that I'll mention in just a moment. Um, during COVID, it's been incumbent upon us, and, I, and I, if you feel the need to continue to do this, that's fine. But we've, we have felt as a school that we needed to have every class um, Zoom available because of the situation with COVID. I think we're, we've entered a phase where if someone's going to get vaccinated, they've gotten vaccinated. If they're not, then they're probably not going to get vaccinated. So we can, as faculty, begin to start to exert a little bit of still with understanding, but a little bit more authority about our requirements for in-person attendance in the classroom. Now, we have, as Akron and South Point, um, made all of our resident modular classes available to students across the, the tri-state network. And so we obviously have to have an exception for those students. So if I'm a South Point student attending an Akron class, um, it's understood that that student is in residence at South Point, but is virtually zooming in to Akron. So the residency requirement is based on their location there in South Point, and they should have the exception to be able to zoom in for every meeting um, for a class that they sign up for. Same thing, Akron student zooming in to South Point. Now, what that means is I can still have a requirement for students who are local to be in person first week, second week. But what I'll have to do for those students who are remote in Akron or South Point, I will have to create a, a Zoom meeting for that student. Um, and I can do that through Zoom without putting it here. 
Um, so I don't think there's a way to add a conference. Actually, there <laughs> there is a way. So I can uh, I can set up. Let's say lesson one. Let's try this. Lesson one, and I'm going to copy and paste it here. Um, I'm going to say introduction to learning environment evangelical theology theological foundations and intro to Christology uh, we're going to be on the 10th this is going to be let's see what time does my class start can you remember what time my class starts how bad is that I think it's 4 30. See, these are things you think you just know these things and our minds are so full sometimes we just can't remember. So my courses, I just want to double check this. My syllabus, okay, 4.30 to 6.55. So I just say 4.30 to 7. So I'm going to put 150 minutes in here. I've got my password up here. Uh, all students, no. Uh, so I'm going to do selected students. and. Uh, so here's what I've got so far. Bryce Simonis is a South Point student. So I am not going to allow um, Bryce to attend lesson one on Zoom. He's going to have to be there in person. Uh, but it, let's say Cheryl Tucker in Akron wanted to take this class. I would allow Cheryl to zoom in for lesson one because she's in, Ak she's in residence at Akron. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm just not going to select any students um, yet until I get my full enrollment uh, figured out. So I need to change that to a comma. That looks good. So save. So now I have lesson one here. I'm going to go ahead and do the second one too. So um, we're going to do lesson two. I'm going to save that. And we're going to continue our, we're going to do biblical foundations, identifying, uh, I think is identifying Christ, I think is what it's called. And then we're going to say, this is January 17th, 4, 30, 50 minutes. Got my password. This is going to be selected students as well. Uh, and I'm going to save that and leave it as is. Uh, yeah, so identifying Christ, identifying Christ. Very good. So now I've got, now later I'll go in and add weeks seven and eight, um, but I'll do that at a later time. But so you can, you can, you can select who can zoom in this day and who can't zoom in that day. And so um, I just wanted to go over that a little bit in depth um, to help everyone out. Please email me questions um, as you uh, may have them. Tests. Um, so I've, I've created two tests. I've not created the questions yet, uh, but I've got a Christology exam. Uh, here's when it's available. It's going to be available during class time. So 4.30 to 7 p.m. Uh, it's going to be due at 7 p.m. Uh, it won't take that long to take the test. Um, but the time limit's going to be one hour, and I don't have any retakes that I'm planning on giving at this time. The calendar. Um, so it's calibrating here, my calendar. Um, it's starting in January because that's when the course starts. Um, and it should, in this cal this is a great resource for us, uh, for the students and for us. Notice that you can add events from here. Um, you can change some settings and you can even print the calendar if you like, oh, I really want a hard copy of this to put on my bulletin board. Well, you can do that right there. Um, and once it loads, I'll go through this. I think it it's going to show not only is this where you can take attendance, you can take attendance here, I think, um, but you can also, uh, all of your assignments will show up here. Students can click on the assignment. They can see basic information about the assignment. Um, again, if, uh, if I go to student view, view course of student, um, they see a calendar as well, and we'll see the due dates pop up. Now notice the student, um, 
headquarters over here on the left is not as large as yours and it doesn't need to be. Um, they just need access to the things that they need access to, to to do the class well. So this is taking a long time to load. So I'm just going to maybe come back to it later. Uh, the roster for your class is here so far. Bryce is my only student for the spring. Um, you can find out more about your student by clicking uh, on them. And you can then go into the grade book. Now you can see, this is wonderful. Once you've created all your assignments, you got your, your professor, your student. Um, I don't know why I'm there. I'm just a test student. There we go. I'm just a test student. Make sure the class is working. Uh, the final overall grade will show up here in the right by the student's name. But the individual assignments are spread out uh, all the way through. And if everything's created appropriately and you're grading from within Populi, um, we are really minimizing the paper output or input. So everything can be done here. Um, and you'll see all of these assignments are, are there. So um, they'll be able to see their individual grades as well as their overall grade, which is what they should see. They should be able to know how is my overall grade affected each step of the way and what do I need to do in the future to uh, improve my grade. Attendance, um, here's, here's the uh, attendance calendar. So uh, let's say I wanna take attendance for uh, January 10th. Uh, this is great, isn't it? I can hit present or absent or tardy or excused. Um, so those are my options. Your syllabus should be clear on your attendance policy. And that even relates to Zoom. Um, if you look in my syllabus, and you look at uh, expected performance for which grades will be assigned. You see attendance here. I've been very specific about my expectations for um, being in class. Uh, here are dates that you cannot zoom in. Uh, appropriate exceptions will be made for Akron additional location students and other modular remote students. Um, because at listen, as, as this technology is becoming available, I've had students who live in Cincinnati, Ohio, ask about courses at Tri-State. I don't think we want to deny those students the opportunity to come, uh, but we need to, and, and so we need to be realistic about those opportunities. For example, if you had a Cleveland student at Akron, that's that's a bit of a drive. I mean, you may you may want to. Uh, I guess we maybe want to stay. What is remote? Maybe we say two hours is is remote. Um, an hour is definitely drivable. And I know that many of us here in Southern Ohio are driving an hour to class. So, um, but uh, you want to be clear about your attendance policy. Reporting. Um, this is, uh, I believe, where we sort of get like um, uh, stats about assignments. I can look at all my assignments, see stats, see grade stats, see participation stats, so on and so forth. Um, how much time um, is being spent uh, in the course. Um, so it looks like Bryce has been in here looking around a little bit. So that's good. He's checking out the class. Uh, there's a chat feature, so I can start a chat session. Um, let's say uh, I know students are going to be prepping for their midterm um, and the day before the midterm, maybe a, for me, that would be a Sunday evening, uh, or maybe I would make it like a Friday evening or Saturday evening. Um, if I wanted to, Hey, I'm going to be available for a chat. If you have any questions about the exam, you can put them in the chat and I'll be there to respond. You could schedule that. Um, and then finally settings. Uh, these are the, the major settings of the course. Um, we, normally should not change anything here unless we're talking to the uh, VP of Academic Affairs. So that would be myself or Bobby Mercer. Um, as of now, uh, notice that you have rubrics to use. Um, I've added all of these. Uh, we have the master rubric for papers. Um, I've created this one for my particular assignment. Uh, visual reflection rubric, I think a lot of people could use. Um, this one is definitely a math rubric for every paper that 
anyone would. Um, this is a reading completion rubric, which basically just allows you to measure the How do you grade discussions, uh, the quality of discussion? So I created a rubric for that. You can add your own rubrics here. I know that uh, our language professor, uh, Jennifer May, has asked about uh, maybe particular rubrics that would help with grading language assignments because they're a little bit different than just a, just a paper per se. So you can add a, a language rubric um, here. Um, so that just about covers it. I hope that um, this has been helpful uh, to, to those who are in the thick of it, getting ready for spring semester. Um, and um, one thing to think about uh, here at the end of this video, you are um, designing a course. Most of us are designing resident modular courses. One of the things I'd like you to think about is as you're building a course, Think about the possibility of it also being um, duplicated into another modality, particularly our distance education online. So if you have assignments built in, you're not, the next time I offer this course, I'm not gonna change this much. Um, I might tweak it here and there a little bit. If there's a new book out, I might change that, that I really like, and that's approved by the school. Um, but mostly, I'm not going to change too much. Um, what would be great is if I created it, created this so well that it could become very easily copied and turned into a, a completely online class that I just have to facilitate with online students. Uh, now, what that's going to require, uh, the, big, the big change there is going to be me adding to my lessons video lectures uh, here in the design, I can add all these different things here uh, in the lesson instead of relying on the in-person or the Zoom meeting for my lecture and teaching time. I'd have to embed uh, online lecture and so forth. So um, uh, pre-recorded lecture, sorry. So I hope that uh, gives you a bit of the vision for how to do this. I hope, you, I hope that it's made you aware of a lot of the resources you have available to you as a as a professor as an adjunct faculty member and uh, as you have questions feel free to talk to Charmaine Malone and Akron or uh, Stephen Lucas um, and our IT uh, folks at South Point if you're an on, if you're a, a online course developer for Tri-State Bible College you would want to also consult with uh, Dr. Mark Phillips, who is our online development project manager. Um, Bobby Mercer is also a great resource for anything popularly. But again, also don't forget how helpful this, this uh, resource is here. You can open a support request. You can view your requests. You can request a feature. If there's something you wish popularly had that it doesn't have, you can click that and say, hey, have you guys ever thought about adding this? Um, let's say you really hate Zoom and you really wish that Google Meet was a part of uh, Populi. Hey, you know, it can't hurt to ask them for it. Um, so uh, that's one of the reasons we haven't used Google Meet, although it sure would be cheaper. Um, but it's because Zoom integrates and Google Meet does not. So uh, I'm rambling a bit now here at the end. So I will go ahead and cut this off. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. Thank you so much for being a part of Tri-State Bible College, its adjunct faculty, as we keep uh, helping students fulfill their ministry callings um, as stewards, as shepherds and servants in Christ's commission and Christ's church. God bless you. It's Christmas time. Merry Christmas to you. Happy Advent. Uh, thank you for being a part of our school. Tri-State Bible College, fulfill your ministry.